Take four. My voice is not cooperating properly. So please bear with me. I created a story and posted it on my Instagram page. And I decided to make this video audio. I would basically read documents. It's a letter. It's a letter from an old man writing to his daughter. His daughter had been told that he had died years ago when she was only a child. And um, I'll, I'll go ahead and get into the story. Okay. He writes to his daughter. By now your mother has revealed a secret she has kept from you for many years. She has told you your father died while you were a baby. She has told you now, and I must tell you soon, because my time on earth is short. I have been working for a super secret U.S. government agency for the better part of 40 years. Recently, one of our nation's enemies was able to infect me with something terrible. Yes, I am your father. It all began about 40 years ago. My wife cheated on me. Perhaps the worst part is she cheated using my baby brother, a guy I just trusted with everything. I never thought he would betray my trust. We were always so close. They left town and then sent me an email describing the situation. Her excuse was I was just too busy with my government job to give her the attention she needed. The fact that my life was in constant danger did not help. When I received the news, I was heartbroken. I wasn't suicidal, but I needed something to deal with the emotional pain. We had no children, so I was living alone. I never used drugs because I was always afraid what they might do to me. Hard liquor was out of the question. My first experience with scotch turned me away from the hard stuff 50 years ago. Despite the huge amount of German ancestors on both sides of my family tree, I had a distaste for beer. I didn't like the taste, nor even the smell of beer. I decided to go to a nearby restaurant to get something to eat and some wine. The food would take care of the gnawing in my stomach and some wine might help my sorrow. The restaurant wasn't busy. A woman was sitting at a table alone, making something that looked clear. She stood up for a moment when I entered the restaurant. I didn't know why. I went to a table close to hers. She was beautiful, probably five foot tall, petite, but very shapely. Shortly after I sat down, a waiter came to take my order. I hadn't had spaghetti for a long time, so I ordered a plate. My food arrived quickly. In the short time before my plate arrived, I ate some delicious bread with lots of butter. The waiter asked if I wanted something to drink. I asked for a bottle of his cheapest wine 
in a glass. I looked at that woman from time to time. She stared as if she knew me, and she smiled. At one point, the waiter asked if I wanted something else. A dessert, perhaps. I declined, but asked what that lady was drinking. He replied, but I asked again because the name was so unfamiliar to me. Then he said, rice wine. I thought that was strange. You squeeze grapes, and from the juice you make wine. I had finished that bottle of wine, and I guess the alcohol had already dulled my brain. I was trying to figure out how could you squeeze liquid out of rice to make rice wine. It sounds so ridiculous. Anyways, I told the waiter to give that lady another glass of rice wine and put it on my tab. I looked at her, and she looked so sad. Maybe her man had left her. I didn't know. I was getting a little bold. My second bottle of wine somehow gave me the courage to walk to her table, introduce myself, and sit at her table. She said something I could not understand. I didn't think the wine had messed my mind that much. Her voice was so pleasing, but I didn't care. Because I didn't understand a word she said. She was someone to be with. I had no idea if she could understand me either. I guess we were simply content to have some companionship. Perhaps the cool night air would help me clear the cobwebs. I motioned for her to stand up and we walked out the door arm in arm, laughing like children. She was smiling. I was feeling like a human being again. My home was less than a block away, and I thought we could sit down, perhaps have some coffee or tea to, to clear away the alcohol, sit on the couch, Let's do some music. Hours passed. I kissed her hand. And she liked it. So we can say, ah. I reached over and kissed her. She enjoyed it, so we continued kissing. Then I guess the alcohol hit my brain extremely hard. The next thing I remembered, I was waking up in bed. What a weird dream I've had, I thought to myself. Then I was shaken wide awake. Next to my pillow was a note. How could it have gotten there? I looked at it. I knew the alcohol could not have damaged my brain that much. The letters on the note looked so strange. Then I realized that last night had not been a dream. I began to think, had I, had we, uh, oh boy. There was a college nearby, so I headed for the foreign language department and found someone to help me. One of the teachers there was kind enough to translate the writing and print out a copy in English. <sighs> that woman had to leave and didn't want to wake me up, so she left a note. She had some kind words to say. She was embarrassed at what had happened and left her name and address. Okay. That mystery was solved. <sighs> then I went to my doctor and got one of those STD tests to be on the safe side. Whew. When I came back negative, I was relieved. I wrote her a letter on my computer, found some software, translated my words into her language, and then printed out the letter. 
and I nailed it. I wondered how long it would be for her to respond. We corresponded by mail for a while and then shifted to email because it was so much faster. Then the letter I wasn't sure I wanted to receive or not arrived. She was pregnant and the baby was mine. Part of me was so joyed at the news, but it was a bittersweet moment. My job prevented me from traveling to see your mother. Things were so secret. And I realized another face to face, face to face meeting might be impossible. Her life would be in danger. The agency agreed to provide a security service to make sure that she stays, stayed safe. Then the news arrived. I was now the father of a little girl. I sent your mother a request that you give her, give you a specific nickname. And when you became old enough to understand, you let you know I had died when you were a little baby. That way, you would not worry about having no memory of me. Years passed, your mother would frequently send me news of your growing up, along with beautiful photos as a baby, then an adorable toddler, and then a cute little girl, a developing teenager, and then as a beautiful young woman. And you are so much my daughter. I gave you the three talents he gave me. Imagination, creativity, and stubbornness. All in even greater measure than mine own. Athleticism, far superior to mine. And of course, your mother's beauty and my brown eyes. Like me, you can become impatient at times and have a dislike for reading instructions. At times you push yourself too hard. It's ironic during the Vietnam conflict. I failed my physical and avoided being drafted and the possibility of having my life ended by an enemy's bullet. And years later, Uncle Sam decided he needed me to serve my country in a different way. Yet, I am meeting my end due to a slow-acting and incurable poison at the hand of one of our nation's enemies. It's also ironic, my darling daughter, that my first letter to you will also be my last. I have no physical pains, just mental ones. When the time comes, a mortician will prepare and cremate my body. My ashes will be sent to my sister-in-law to be buried in the cemetery plot my father had bought for me many years ago. Forgive me for not having had a part in your life. Forgive your mother. The years of this deception that were necessary for the safety for both of you, love, your dad.